Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and I just got my hands on the new Descent Biometric Wallet that now comes with a USB-C connector. So I'm going to get it unboxed and set up for you. I'll show you how to back up the seed phrase and keep it safe and secure. And then I'll show you how to get the wallet configured for your favorite cryptos. And I'll do a test deposit and withdraw for you guys. So let's jump in. Okay, when you first get your uh, Descent wallet, you'll note that it has uh, tamper-proof seals on it. So you've got your outer shrink wrap and then the tamper-proof seals. And while we're on the subject of being tamper-resistant, I did want to point out that in addition to the physical tampering countermeasures like the uh, tamper-resistant seal on the outside, the wallet itself also has cryptographic verification built in. So it has an EAL5 plus certified chip that uh, encrypts the private keys, stores them offline. And if there is any tampering detected, the wallet will reset itself. Also, it has the automatic verification of the genuine software uh, to prevent unauthorized modifications. So it has all the bases covered physically and through software and cryptography when it comes to being tamper resistant and uh, you can rest assured that you have a genuine device and genuine software. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, unbox here. All right, so when you first open the wallet, you're going to see your uh, welcome card. It's going to give you a QR code to take you to the official wallet download. All right, and, and this will take us to a user guide. So here's the guide that you could follow for step-by-step -step instructions on your own. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to get through everything as well. All right, so we have our recovery sheet here. Uh, they give us a few. This is where you record your backup phrase. It's very important. Uh, this is the private key that the wallet will generate. It'll give us... Uh, a backup phrase that we can record in case something happens to the device. We can always get a new device and restore all of our wallets. All right, and as I noted earlier, it has a USB-C connector, which makes it uh, very versatile. All right, so the first thing we do is choose our language. The OK uh, Confirm button is over here, and the Back button is on this side. So uh, we'll hit OK for English. This is a brand new wallet, so I'm going to do uh, create wallet rather than uh, recover. Recover would be if you already have a seed phrase from a previous wallet that you wish to recover. So we're gonna create a brand new wallet. All right, and it's asking us to set a pin. So we'll go ahead and get a pin set. We can navigate up and down uh, for our digit. And then when we've got the digit we want, we'll just click OK. All right, and when we've got enough digits, we can just click OK again, or we can navigate up and down to add more if we want more digits. All right, I used a short pin for this demo, but you might want a longer one, like eight digits. All right, and then they want us to confirm that. Now we'll set up our uh, fingerprint. I like to use my thumb because it makes it really easy to hold this device and use the fingerprint reader. All right, so uh, just place your thumb or finger on there. All right, and now it's time to enter our seed phrase. The seed phrase is a backup of the secure private key that the device generated. It will allow you to recover the wallet if something happens to your device. All right, and so you see the first four words there, and then you can just scroll through all of your words. You want to write these words down carefully. Make sure that you've written them down correctly, legibly, so that you can read them. You can use the card that came with the device, or you can use a piece of paper, uh, whatever works best for you. I like to use paper, uh, label the wallet and the date. Uh, it's much more readable for me. Uh, and then when you're done, it's probably a good idea to transfer that seed phrase onto some sort of more durable medium, like uh, CryptoTag Loki is a good choice. I love the CryptoTag Loki, uh, but there are lots of metal medium for seed phrases out there. 
on the market, so whatever works best for you. I'll go ahead and write down my words. Make sure that each corresponding word is in the right number slot. The order is very important. So we've got the words are numbered here. Just make sure you write them uh, in the correct corresponding number on your sheet. Okay, and then when you're done uh, writing them down, you'll confirm on your device. It's going to ask you to enter the words on the device to confirm that you have them written down correctly. Uh, this is tedious, but very important. All right, after you've entered the first three, it's going to give you a choice of words. So just choose the word you have written down and click OK. And then just go through each of the words. All right, and once you're done, you'll get a message telling you you're done. And then uh, you'll download the app and sync up. There's the Descent Wallet there. We can download this and we'll just open it up. All right, in the app, we'll tap Create Wallet and then we want to use the Biometric Wallet. We'll just tap Biometric. Okay, we've already set up the device and we've done all this. Okay, and now we want to set uh, a password for the app. I'm going to go ahead and enable Face ID. It just makes it easier to get in and out of the app. Now I'm going to allow Bluetooth so that uh, my phone can find the device. And then up here is where we connect the wallet. So we'll tap that. It sees our device because we have the device close and it's on. So you add the accounts of the cryptos that you wish to manage. So I'll choose Bitcoin. You can call these whatever you want. All right, so uh, we have an empty Bitcoin account. And then uh, to add more accounts, we can just hit the plus and choose uh, maybe a different crypto like Ethereum. All right, and I'll go ahead and add one more. Uh, I'll choose Solana here. All right, actually, I'll go ahead and add uh, XRP as well. All right, now we've got several accounts set up. Now, to fund the wallet, all you have to do is tap on the crypto that you want to manage and do a receive. All right, so we just tap receive, and then it's going to give us an address to send crypto to. This is the address of your wallet. We don't store the crypto in our phones. We don't store the crypto in the device. Uh, the device is just the uh, key or authorization for wallets that you've created on the blockchain. The phone simply manages the public information. Uh, send and receive and transaction history and balance, right? That's all on the phone. But none of that is accessible without the device, right? The device uh, provides the security and full access. So in order to fund the wallet, we'll simply copy the address of our wallet into our clipboard, right? And then we can go and uh, purchase some crypto on an exchange or move it from a different location. If you have a different wallet or your friend has a wallet and wants to send you crypto, it's all the same, right? Crypto addresses are universal. You can send from anywhere. So uh, I'll buy a little Bitcoin over on uh, Coinbase. I already have some Bitcoin in my Coinbase account. I want to transfer that to my Descent wallet. So I'll tap Transfer, and then I'll choose Send Crypto. I'll go ahead and allow the paste because I have that address in my clipboard. Okay, Coinbase doesn't like me sharing my screen, so I'm going to have to uh, stop that. Hopefully you'll be able to see everything that's going on on my phone here. Okay, so we'll do that again. We'll say transfer, send crypto, um, and then we're gonna just paste in the address from the clipboard there that I have uh, copied from Descent. All right, and then I'll confirm that. And I'll send all of the Bitcoin in my account. If you have a lot of uh, Bitcoin or whatever crypto in your exchange account, please do small test transfers first to make sure it gets there before you send huge amounts. You don't want to make a mistake because crypto transactions are irreversible. So always do a small test. So uh, I'm going to choose the Bitcoin network here because I've set up a regular Bitcoin account on my Descent, right? I'll choose Max because it's only $50 worth, and then I'll tap Send Now. All right, so I sent the uh, Bitcoin from my Coinbase account. 
over to the Descent wallet. So that outgoing transaction is now pending. Let's go back and uh, grab some more addresses. So we'll just back out of this, back to our accounts. And I want to send some XRP. So I'll tap XRP here. All right, and then we'll tap Receive here. We'll get that address. In a standalone wallet, when you're using XRP, you don't need tags, right? So this wallet is not going to give you a tag because it's not necessary. So uh, when we go back over to Coinbase, we want to do a transfer, send crypto, allow paste, and then we'll paste in that address and we'll confirm it. And there's my XRP balance. We'll tap that. I don't need the tag, as I mentioned before, so uh, don't worry about the tag when sending to your own wallet. So we'll skip the tag. I'll go ahead and send the max, and then I'll choose send now. All right, so uh, off it goes to my Descent wallet. Yeah, so let's go back to our Descent wallet. Uh, we can back up. Oh, there's the alert from Coinbase. Uh, if you see it's red, we want to make sure that we've connected to the device. So we can just re-choose the device. It's not strictly necessary that much when we're receiving crypto, but we'll definitely need it connected when we're sending. Uh, so you can see the XRP has already come in. The Bitcoin will take a bit longer. I'll go into the Solana. I'll tap Receive and get the Solana address, right? You see the process is the same for every crypto. Right, we go into the account, hit receive, get the address, copy it into our clipboard, go back over to our exchange, we'll do transfer, allow the paste, and then we'll paste in the address from our clipboard and confirm it. All right, they know it's a Solana address. All right, I'll send the max and then send now. All right, so I sent out the Solana. So I've done several transfers. Uh, as you can see, it's not that difficult. All you have to do is get the address from the app and use that as your sending address, right? All right, so I've showed you how to deposit several different cryptocurrencies into the wallet. Now I'm gonna show you how to move crypto out of the wallet. And this is where the security of the device comes into play. Um, in order to move crypto out of this wallet, there has to be an authorization by the private key. The private key is stored in the device, so we'll need the device when we do these transfers. So uh, as you can see in the app, I'm not synced up. You'll notice that it's red up here in the corner um, on both sides. So we uh, need to get the device synced up before we do these transfers and uh, we need to fire the device up. So if you just leave it sitting around, it will uh, go to sleep on its own. You can enter the pin or use your fingerprint ID. All right, and once you've got the device fired up, uh, you can tap this little icon up here. Uh, you'll see the device and then uh, it's gonna sync up. All right, so in order to do a send, we need an address, we need a destination. So we can get that from uh, an exchange or a different wallet. If you wanted to send it off to a different wallet, your wallet or someone else's wallet, uh, that's the beauty of crypto, it's transferable. All right, so we'll start off with the Bitcoin. We'll go into the Bitcoin account and we wanna do a send. So the question is, where do I wanna send this? So um, I'll send some back to Coinbase, right? We'll say we want to do uh, a transfer, but in this this time we'll do receive, and we'll choose Bitcoin, and they're going to give us a Bitcoin address. This is the Bitcoin address of my Coinbase account. This is my destination. So I'll just paste that in here, and there we go. All right, how much do we want to send? I'll go ahead and send it all. We'll hit next. All right, and it breaks down the uh, transaction for us. There will be blockchain fees, right? The Bitcoin network charges blockchain fees. This is not the wallet charging you a fee. This is the Bitcoin network charging you a fee. We'll hit send here. 
Now we need to verify on the device. Notice the device is processing. All right, it gives us all the information about the transfer. You want to carefully look this information over, make sure it matches what you see on your screen, and then uh, you'll confirm by clicking OK. All right, uh, you'll enter your PIN or use your thumb or finger to authorize this. You'll see it's processing on the device and uh, the device uh, completes the authorization, sends the authorization back to the public part of the wallet, your app, and off it goes. And so you'll see the Bitcoin will uh, go to zero shortly. Now let's do a send to an ex a different exchange. See, so you can see how different exchanges work. We'll try Kraken. All right, in Kraken, I do deposit and I say I want to send Solana. It gives me a Solana address. I'll copy that address into my clipboard. Very similar to what we just did in Coinbase. All right, so we go into the Solana account. We do a send and we paste in that address, right? Pretty much the same thing we just did with our Bitcoin. We'll hit next. All right, I'll send max. I'll hit next. There's a breakdown. Uh, we're paying fees on the Solana network, but they're a lot less than the Bitcoin fees. All right, and then we need to authorize this on the device, right? So once again, the device is going to show us all the information about the transaction. We'll authorize by clicking OK and then using our thumb or pin to authorize. All right, you'll see the device is processing. And oh, sometimes if you have issues, you might need to send just slightly less than the max. Uh, sometimes when prices fluctuate, um, your max calculations are incorrect. So um, I sent a little bit less than max. We'll hit next. All right, the device wants me to authorize. All right, and there we go. Everything worked out. So the Solana's on its way. Now I'll do the XRP. The XRP is a little more tricky because when sending XRP to an exchange, you need a tag. It's very important. So uh, we'll do Coinbase. We'll go to Coinbase. We'll go back here, we'll do another transfer and receive, and say we'd like to receive XRP. Notice they give us a, an address and a tag, so we need to make sure to use both of those. I'll start with the address, copy it into my clipboard. I'll go back over here and hit the XRP, I'll hit send, and then I'll paste in the address. And then uh, the destination tag field is down here. I'll go back to Coinbase. I'll grab that destination tag, which is just digits. All right, we'll paste that one in. So now we have the address and the tag ready to roll. We'll hit next. All right, I'll go ahead and send the max this time. They reserve one XRP automatically. That's how XRP wallets work. We'll hit next. There's a breakdown. We'll hit send. And then we need to verify on the device, right? The device is going to show us the information, right? We'll check everything to make sure that it matches. Uh, it's got a little more information here and then it needs the authorization. Use your fingerprint or enter your PIN, either way. All right, you'll see the device is processing and out it goes. All right, so that's the Descent wallet. It's a great biometric-based wallet. Makes it really easy to authorize transactions using your thumbprint, or if you want to use a PIN, you can do it that way. It's kind of weird, but a lot of people have asked me, you know, what if I lose my finger? Will I lose my crypto? The answer is no. 
if uh, the, the biometric is really just there as a convenience to make it easier to authorize transactions, but if you can't use the biometric for whatever reason, then you it always falls back to the pin that you've set up. So don't worry about losing your finger and losing your crypto. Uh, the device will always fall back to the pin authorization. So if you have any other questions about anything I've done today, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.